Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Troy Dawson. I am not Stephen Gallagher. And I am Troy Dawson, and I am not Stephen Gallagher. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait. No, no, sorry. <laughs> I am Stephen Gallagher, not Troy Dawson. Yep. And what are we talking about today, Stephen? Uh, today, our topic is uh, how we bootstrapped uh, CentOS Stream 10 and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 with uh, Fedora ELN. And how we're going to look, uh, and we're, then we're going to look a little forward into how we plan to bootstrap CentOS Stream 11. Cool. That sounds like something I want to hear about. <laughs> now, let's figure out how to actually, there we go. So, we got to figure it out. Actually, is this mic working too? Yeah. It is. This one that picks will, up quite a bit. That will make uh, things easier. Okay. So, let's start with a, a little bit of background. I, I assume most of the people in this room probably can guess what a bootstrap is, but uh, just to, just to provide a little bit of context, um, a bootstrap of, a, of an operating system is basically getting it, uh, getting the set of packages and builds uh, up and running enough that the OS can build itself. And we have to do this for every major uh, enterprise uh, Linux release uh, every so many years. And three. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm going to get to that because oh, three is, three is a recent, you know, in the geological scale. Uh, sent, uh, uh, change, uh, but the problem is that, uh, well, it's not really a problem. We, uh, as you well know, Fedora it provides the proving ground for new technologies, the innovation lab, if you will, that we use to uh, eventually produce a CentOS stream and RHEL release. Uh, this is great in most cases. It's, uh, it's fantastic that we have this uh, very accessible open source uh, public project that is Fedora. It's great because it'll run on anything. I mean, I have, I have literally seen it running on a toaster. This is not a joke. I have seen someone install and run Fedora on a smart toaster. Don't ask me why, they couldn't answer that question either. <laughs> because it's there. So the, the primary purpose of Fedora is to be where we prove that our great idea works. But then you have the enterprise Linux side, of the side, and it's a lot more particular about what it intends to run on, in uh, especially uh, it needs to run on servers, it needs to run on IoT devices, specific pieces of hardware, not the entire world of things that people have decided, decided it was a good idea to put a CPU into. Uh, and it's important in an enterprise Linux distribution that we only ship Software that we are reasonably confident in. Um, I'm not gonna, I, I overstated a little bit there about stability being the primary driver. It is true, but it's, we're all, many of us are engineers in this room and know that stability is a kind lie we tell ourselves. So, uh, we try our best to minimize the uh, instability. So. Oh, sorry, by the way. So when, we're boot when we go to do a bootstrap from Fedora, uh, classically what we, have to do, what we had to do is we'd want to uh, trim out any unnecessary dependencies, anything that the uh, application doesn't actually need to run. Um, common things like that are a lot of packages have build dependencies on a series of things that are, run, are, are in there only to run a series of tests. We try to pull those out of the package and instead run those as a test on the, the resulting builds instead. We try, to do, uh, we try to do things like pre-generate docs because every time some new package pulls in Python Sphinx, mm -hmm. um, a, a baby duckling dies. <laughs> um, it, it pulls in almost a thousand packages and dependencies. Uh, if, 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 well, since we finally got rid of it in ELN, every time it shows up again, it pulls in about 980 packages with it. So we, we cut that down as fast as we can. Um, I, su I suspect that uh, my colleague Yakov is watching on the live stream and is probably nodding to himself sagely right now. Um, we also uh, want to make sure, again, with the, uh, with the r minimizing instability side of things, uh, Fedora tends to run, conf you know, configure their packages with everything plus the kitchen sink and maybe the bathroom sink to be sure. Whereas when we build something for RHEL, sometimes we trim that down to only the set of features that is well tested and supportable, and so that might be that's a build time change that we have to be able to account for. 
So that's, a, that's one of the, th these are some of the many reasons why we can't just ship Fedora, you know, just certify Fedora packages and ship them off. Um, we also do things like uh, in RHEL, for example, we are using a, a much more, uh, how do I want to phrase this so it doesn't sound, uh, sound impolite, but we're using a much more recent uh, baseline of the uh, x86 architecture, the ARCH64 architecture, and uh, S390X and PPC64 than what we support in, in Fedora. Because again, Fedorans really like their, stu their software to run on Is that old a nice hardware. way of saying Rail doesn't want work on old hardware? <laughs> I didn't say that. Oh. <laughs> And you, won't hear, and you won't hear me say that anywhere that can be recorded. Oh, okay. <laughs> I might have said that. <laughs> um, and then uh, be uh, beyond that, we have some, uh, some Compose uh, tweaks that we do, like separating things into, uh, pa into package repositories based on how long uh, RHEL is willing to support them. Next. Yep. So, oh, I forgot I had these on. What was that next? Did that yeah, change? It, yeah, it did. It's just oh, I, it I, just I, added one. I forgot those were. Cute. How about we? So, classically, this always ha this happened after we would pick a Fedora release, we would branch it, and then we would start the bootstrap process. And so this would happen after we branched from Fedora. We, it would generally re require between nine and, in our worst case, I think it was uh, thirteen months of uh, of time to dedicated by. Uh, between two and four uh, dedicated bootstrap engineers getting this all up and running before we could hand it over to the general RHEL development for their, uh, for their uh, finalization and then stabilization and then beta release. So when RHEL 8 was announced and we were all up there firing our little confetti cannons and they said, and guess what? We're going to do this every three years from now on. Some of us went, what? Um, you know, we were finding that out at the same time uh, the uh, general public was, which was, I'll go with hilarious. Um, but we knew that that wasn't going to work, so we needed to figure out a better way to bootstrap that wasn't going to take uh, nine months to a year after a Fedora branch. So let's see what let's see what we came up with. Ta-da! Introducing Fedora ELN uh, or Enterprise Linux Next. Um, and I, I just take a moment to thank uh, Mo Duffy for the e excellent icon that she put, put together for us. Yep. Um, we put the relish on the beefy miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what it is is Fedora ELN is a rebuild of Rawhide, the, the subset of Rawhide packages that is uh, useful or, or has been determined that we want to try and support for RHEL. So we have a, a set of tools that we do that uh, we use that we'll auto build, uh, auto rebuild those, rel, those uh, rawhide packages whenever they're built in rawhide. We will pull, pull the commit ID. We will rebuild it with the rel build flags. So it'll report itself as rel not Fedora to, the, to all the uh, RPM macros. And it'll b do whatever that, S uh, that uh, spec file says it would do if it was building on CentOS stream or if it was building on, a rel, uh, on the rel builder. Um, this allows us to do some really interesting things. Um, uh, I, I'm going to look at Michelle while I, say, while I point out that uh, ELN is using frame, it has frame pointers enabled, whereas, uh, which is, I, I understand, helping uh, some debugging efforts and profiling efforts uh, in, at uh, Meta. These are, uh, these are changes that we can do, uh, this and newer, the updated baselines. Um, these, are, these are things we can do that we can use to proactively determine, uh, proactively try these things out that we plan to do for RHEL and do them in a way that doesn't impact Fedora users because they would get grumpy if we suddenly started requiring the V3 standard of the x86 platform in all of Fedora. But my toaster, they cry. Um, <laughs> so, um, Next. Please. And I, I guess I covered some of this, but the goal is, um, once we, once we get uh, at least partway into the uh, development of, uh, the, of uh, ELN, we're trying to do this earlier and earlier. Uh, I think for CentOS Stream 10, it was a little under a year after RHEL 9 that we, got, we, started the, uh, we started syncing it over to CentOS Stream 10. Is that right? No. No. No, it's not right. It was a little the, over a year. The sync was uh, right at 39. Okay. 
All right. It was. It, okay, it was a little, a little, you, fair, a little. You, you were wrong. concentrating on the ELN, but we were right. holding it off until 39. That's right. Okay. So what we what we have uh, set up is similar to the sync that we have from Rawhide to ELN, where we do the rebuilds. We we also have a tool that syncs the Git repositories, look aside cache, and then triggers builds on Cento, the CentOS streams uh, the stream side. And so we were doing this sync for at least a year. Yeah. The before, sync, we, uh, before we yeah. Broke the, uh, before we broke before we broke inheritance from Fedora to make sure that all the machinery was in place and it was all working before we had people committing directly to CentOS Stream. Yeah, and the goal good. here is that we should be, in, in, in a perfect world, we should be able to decide arbitrarily at any moment, you know what, let's make, uh, let's make CentOS Stream 10 now and turn off the sync and just get going. And we were pretty close on that this time and I'll talk sure. about that in a few minutes. Ready? Please, sorry. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, just as a quick, as a higher level overview, um, how, how does a build become a law, or how does a patch become a rel package? Um, sorry, that one's there for the, mostly for the Americans, uh, the old Americans, I might add. Um, I was including myself in that, thank you. Uh, so you make a change, you commit it to, uh, to Fedora Rawhide, the change, uh, you then go and you build your change for Fedora Rawhide. It goes through the machinery, it goes into Bodhi, it gets tagged into the Rawhide tag, assuming it passes its basic, check, basic uh, smoke tests. As soon as it hits that tag, we get a notification. Fedora ELN goes ahead and, re uh, goes ahead and triggers a rebuild. It pulls the uh, commit uh, ID from the uh, build of, from, uh, from Rawhide, rebuilds it with all the, uh, the flags, pushes it out to Bodhi, which does the same set of, uh, roughly the same set of uh, basic uh, smoke tests, pushes it into the ELN tag. Then, during the periods where, period we, where we had the sync enabled, it also then triggered a, uh, it sent out a message that triggered another build, or another uh, sync. This time syncing over the, the entire Git contents, uh, Git history to CentOS stream, and then triggering a build over there, as well as the lookaside cache. I think I mentioned that earlier. Oh, yeah. And then CentOS uh, stream 10, do uh, you want to just cover that in the well, highest level? After a couple months and we got things set up, then, it would actually do Rawhide, ELN, CentOS Stream 10, and then we were syncing it all the way over to RHEL 10, including look aside cache, all that stuff. There's still the internal disk it. Is it mine? No, we're still no, on yours. No, we're still on me. Sorry. I, <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's, it's all Steve all the time here. Yes. Um, so as soon as it matches my shirt, then it's my <laughs> turn. <laughs> Precisely. All right, so uh, just to give you a little bit of a, an example, um, like I said, uh, in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, our bootstrap time, we branched from Fedora in July of 2017, and we handed it over to the RHEL developers in May of 2018. So 11 months, it, uh, just about, it took to get, into, uh, get from Fedora to RHEL development. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10, we branched from Fedora in February 2024, when Fedora 40 branched from Rawhide. And we handed it over to the RHEL developers in March of 2024. So I think we did a better a better job this time around than we were doing then. I think this I think this has actually worked at least in terms of uh, not wasting everybody's time. It did so uh, I was less stressed this time. Yes. Hey. And I believe it's now now it matches my shirt. <laughs> so Steve said I had to wear a shirt that matched my font. I said nothing of the sort. <laughs> Okay, I said I was going to make it where it should match my thoughts. Okay, so where is CentOS Stream 10 now? This is the here and now. We've seen all that things. And as Stephen said, in March, March of 2024, we cut that off. And we started uh, giving it to the rail developers. So where are we now? I'm rebuilds. So we've had several mass rebuilds. We had, for those, those that don't know, for, for bootstrapping, one of the things you do is you have a mass rebuild twice because you want to build it all on the original packages that came from Fedora, then you want to build it all on the packages you just built. So we had two mass rebuilds, and that was actually right before we handed it off to, that was during that February thing handed it off to the things. But packages keep coming in. Um, the developers are stabilized and things like that. And when they came, uh, 
so this is early on in the Fedora 40 things, and a lot of things were pre things. So uh, GCC was GCC a pre? The, the yes, there was a pre-release. Yeah, the kernel was like 6.9 pre. No, the kernel was actually 6.8 pre, and things progressed and. All these pre's finally became stable. So we got our stable glibc, gcc, jdk, um, and things like that. So a lot of things got stable. We've done our mass rebuild. And we're done with our first mass rebuild. There are smaller mass rebuilds happening as we speak, even. Uh, the Java one is done Tuesday. The Perl is happening as we speak. They're going to Perl blah, 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 dot 40. 5.40, how about that? Uh, I might, re I didn't, I'm not actually rebuilding packages. Boy, that is a little loud, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll step over here. Anyway, these are still happening, but there's less of them. Uh, the Java was a major one. The Perl, if you're using Perl's a major one. Most of the others, like like I said, Rust, GCC, uh, Python, they're, they're fairly stable, so we're not, we're, the mass rebuilds have settled down. So that's where we're at as of this week, as of this day. Usually I don't have, I don't have to say this day, but uh, yeah. Tomorrow, Pearl will be done, maybe. <laughs> uh, package of removals and additions. Those are still going on, but the majority of them hopefully are done. Um, in the past several months, uh, our team had been removing dozens of packages and adding a lot of them. I will note that while we are, have, have removed a, a few dozen packages, um, that is in comparison to RHELs 9 and 8, <laughs> where we were lit literally removing hundreds, if, and in, but, uh, in the case of RHEL 8, uh, thousands of packages at this point in the, in the development. So, yeah. Because, we ha again, we hadn't been able to bootstrap, uh, hadn't been able to do all that trimming in Fedora. So mostly these are the stragglers, the ones the that, uh, didn't get, that didn't get there in time or just uh, for one reason or another didn't have the resources to do it there. Yeah, Stephen doesn't have the numbers, but uh, Yakov, an, another member of our team, does have the numbers. And yeah, eight, we started off with like 4,000 and ended up with 2,500. Nine, we started off with like 3,000 and ended up with like 2,500. And this one we started out with 2,200, I mean, 2,300, you're right. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was just under 2,300. 2,300. And to be honest, the number hasn't really gone down because we've added a bunch. We, they're like, we want wget2. No, we don't want wget2. We, anyway, uh, those package removals have slowed down dramatically. Uh, the past several weeks, um, our team hasn't been as busy with those. But so majority of them are done. So those of you that are going to be in the Apple Hackfest, I think we're stable enough to, you know, before I used to say in, in our meetings, no, don't, don't build them yet. I think we're stable enough. Uh, availability. Okay, we are making composes. Uh, RHEL 10, uh, okay, I don't do the RHEL 10. CentOS Stream 10 composes. Uh, they're in the same places they've always been. Uh, there's, there's the compose. I'm talking about composers. Uh, those of you who came to Adams me means this is the RPMs with the, in their repositories divided up into AppStream base OS CRB. Um, and install images like uh, the DVD and the network boot thing. I'm not talking about the images like the QCOW or the containers. We'll get to those. So the composers are in our usual compose things. We have a development compose daily. We have a production that's at least weekly. Uh, the past five days, it's been almost hourly as I've tried to fix things. <laughs> and not, nothing to do with any of those things. But so you've been getting updates a lot. But then, um, then we push into the mirrors. I, I will note, uh, it's, it's on the, sh the slide, but uh, the Production Compose is a name. It is not we do not intend or expect or hope that you will be using this in a, pr a production workload today. Yeah, that's right. 
That, that is a name only. Uh, it's literally hard-coded into Oz or some of the things. There's nothing we could do to change the name. Yeah. It's like, who, who, who hard-codes? Like, <laughs> anyway, there was nothing we could do. It, it is just a name. Which names? The question is uh, from the audience is why are the names different between? Uh, which? which uh, oh, the comp the. Oh. Uh, stream tenant versus tenant stream. Because I had nothing to do with any of those names. <laughs> the different people wrote down the mirror. So here's what. It, so it, these composes meaning the packages, the the repos is available on the mirrors and the mirrors are at 10 dash stream and the composes is stream dash 10. Different people pick the name. <laughs> yeah. And, and I had no choice in any of them. <laughs> so, so also, uh, so the composer, you're, Oh, I, I have them here. I, I did such good slides. Here's the compose URL, that's what I was trying to say. The mirrors, uh, the SIGs, the CentOS Stream SIGs, it is available on CBS. C -R oh, that's wrong. Oh, CBS. CBS. Yeah, that should be the CentOS uh, Stream build yeah. system. Yeah, CentOS C C Cento Community, Community build, build system. system. Sorry. Uh, I got, you know, you get CRB in your mind and it's not a real acronym. So anyway, <laughs> so that's what's available right now. Uh, installability, it uh, usually installs. In fact, as somebody noted on Adam's things, it's actually now test, passing tests on x86-64. I have no ARM or S390 or PowerPC, so I can't even test those. But it's usually installable. If it's not, uh, wait a week. Stabilization is ongoing, but it's getting much more stable. Cloud AWS images. Um, <laughs> yes, now. Uh, sorry, that's why I've been doing those stupid cloud AWS images have been driving me nuts for two weeks, three weeks. Um, they are now created. They are not pushed up to AWS. They are not pushed up to the CentOS, what do we call it, Cloud CentOS. Uh, the reason is uh, we're waiting for somebody to say go um, because th th this isn't really released. Uh, so anyway, we have scripts in place. We can push them up. Uh, we just aren't for reason. Uh, probably because of the reason above here, which is called stabilization. Um, anyway. We do have images. You can pull them from the, the Compose stream. They don't ever go to the mirror. But uh, you can pull them from the Compose stream. There we go. Um, we used to have containers until we fixed images. We're working on that next week. Everybody loves bug whack-a-mole. Yes. We love when one fix the others. So anyway. Uh, cloud AWS images, they're found in the Compose URL place. Containers, actually, as a container as of last week is up in Quay, that, that thing, but it's marked development. Um, so there is some containers. Uh, they, might, they might get old for a week or two. So where else is, where is Apple 10 now? I was expecting Carl's head to pop up. <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. Right now. Um, we just sort of threw this slide up to, to go. We're, we've got the Hackfest tomorrow. Um, Apple 10 is, at the time I wrote these slides, we had no idea, and Carl had no idea, but Carl is, has got it working. Carl, I should, I'm going to say Carl and team because I'm pretty sure you, you have a team with you doing it. Um, Apple 10 is getting started. Your favorite app is not in Apple 10 yet. Just guaranteed that. But uh, the Apple 10 maintainers are going to see what happens. So, 
and cranking it up to 11. This is where we want to talk to you guys, to you all. Because that's a terrible phrase, you guys. It so really I'm gonna, I like the southern y'all. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've been going with folks myself. Folks. Uh, it's, it sounds very folksy. That was the idea. Oh. So, uh, yeah, so when we, when we put in for this talk, uh, we asked for an hour. They gave us 90 minutes. So uh, we, have quite a, we have quite a bit of time, and we wanted to turn this into an audience participation event, uh, and probably the latter half uh, being unofficially kind of a hack fest, or at least a workshop. Yep. Uh, so we started with a, couple of, with a few questions here. And when we say we here, we mean we in this room, not, uh, we in the wider uh, Centa stream community, and not we, Troy, and myself. Yep. Fedora contributors, CentOS stream, well, Cento. anyway, users, maintainers, not just us. So uh, we, we figured we'd go, we, these are three of the, uh, of the biggest questions we have that we want to answer together today. Um, first of all, okay. yeah, well, um, we, we can talk about, that, that, that was kind of, that, those That's other slides the are kind of a question for, that might take a long time. Yes, well, that, that was also more of a, well, we've run out of things to talk about. Let's talk about that. Yep. But uh, <laughs> so uh, st uh, throughout the Center Stream 10 process, we uh, obviously it went uh, like we said it went quite a bit better than previous releases. Yes. Uh, but better is not perfect. It never will be. And uh, so we want to know what do we what can we do better? What what, what can we improve as we go to Center Stream 11? Uh, this is the right time to talk about that because we are already into that development. ELN has been tracking, uh, has been tracking towards uh, CentOS Stream 11 since uh, February of this, yeah. of this year. Since we, over, we already got a hand raised. We do. Let me run, a, run this over. So um, for glibc, we do a weekly CI CD sync into Rawhide. That means we get a weekly ELN build to highlight to us what impact we are having on ELN, ELN 11. What I'm missing is to be able to tell the team, go look at the automated test results for ELN. Where are our automated test results for ELN? Because Rawhide, I've turned on Rawhide gating, and I have a QE team, and we have Rawhide tests going on, and we have Rawhide gating, and we look at the Rawhide gating. Rawhide gating catches real things where we make mistakes in upstream glibc, and then on our weekly sync, we can then go notify the upstream glibc developers, look, we broke this, we sh it showed up in OpenQA or Rawhide gating, showed up in GNOME tests, whatever, and downstream as we integrate weekly, because we're doing a weekly sync. It'd be great to have those tests running for ELN as well, because ELN is radically different given the uh, Red Hat RPM config changes for the, the Red Hat bits, because they, they turn on bits in the builds that we don't otherwise expect to be turned on for a while. And sometimes we didn't see that until much later. So. Again, gating for ELN. Uh, so there's there's a nuanced answer here. Um, the first of the the first part is uh, up until uh, well <coughs> today even uh, we still have uh, our composers are running in a different mechanism than uh, the Fedora ones are. Although I am actively in the middle of tra of transitioning them to the way that Fedora does the rest uh, does their normal composes and probably their mirrors and I think that should allow us some opportunity to plug into where their gate where the gating the compose gating uh, can take place and run more of tests on that we also have had attempts by the uh, Fedora QA team to uh, to run more tests on ELN and they have been largely stymied by the fact that that pretty much their entire infrastructure uh, requires them to be able to boot a VM on secure boot, which up until I think last week we could not do in ELN because we had uh, we had not realized that we had a signature problem. Uh, nobody had actually been attempting it on a on an e, uh, on a uh, secure boot system that I knew of, and so uh, we and everyone was testing it on either BIOS or EF or uh, a non secure boot EFI. So I, th I am hopeful, I and mean, I'm going to be sitting down, uh, I hope, this week with, uh, with uh, Adam Williamson and uh, Savantro and the others, and uh, trying to see what we can do about getting that turned back on now that we have, now that we should actually be able to boot those VMs. And we've got another question I from Carlos. I have another question, I want to let everybody else ask questions if they have other questions. 
I didn't see any other hands go up yet, so. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, as part of the reverse dependency gating tests, we use uh, a build orchestration tool called Mass Prebuild that we built for platform tools specifically to test uh, compiler rebases building, you know, 15, 20,000 packages just to make sure the compiler quality is there. We need copper. So are there any other, like, are we ready for me to carry out a copper ELN build of 15,000 packages or so in copper? Is that okay? Like, is, is ELN ready when, in copper right now? I haven't checked. I'm just asking. Uh, so we do have uh, copper set up in, or sorry, we do have uh, mock configs that copper can use, and I believe, I'm pretty sure it's turned on. Um, I was just about to check. Like, whether they... Project, like, can I make a ELN, like the, the question would be, can I make a project with ELN 11 as the, or ELN as the build root, and then build into it? I am pretty sure that the answer to that is yes. Uh, to, the, to answer your wider question, which is, is uh, can I build, can I build uh, you know, 2,500 packages with it? Uh, that is more of a load question on copper than it is an ELN question. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, ELN should be able to, ha uh, to function just fine in copper. Uh, every once in a while, I, I, actually, I think it may have only been when we, at the branch point there, there was a, Hiccup between uh, mock core configs not being updated at the same uh, at the same pace that caused a few a few issues, but that got resolved within a week. I see Fedora ELN all four arches right now when I hit new projects in copper. So okay. I think that looks good. Thanks. So yeah, you can you can delete. We believe. I think that's uh, yes. Oh, did somebody <laughs> verify that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we should be good. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the question here, though, is what are we? What else? What um, as far as uh, as doing this bootstrapping? One of the things I would like to see us doing better, and this is maybe a little more for the uh, red hatters in the room than the uh, than the non red hatters, is uh, I would like for red hat internal employees to be spending a little more attention on ELN, because right now it's pretty reactive. Um, uh, my team and uh, especially, again, Yakov, who was probably on the uh, uh, video, uh, watching the video now, pretty, we monitor things and we try to keep an eye on when builds fail or when, uh, or when composes start failing because, someone, uh, because a build succeeded but broke everything, uh, things like that. They, it, we tend to then go and either, if we can fix it ourselves easily, uh, we do, or we roll it back, and then we notify somebody in, internally. But it, um, and I think to your, to your question, Carlos, I think uh, having more automated testing and maybe some compose gating would ha help to get more eyes on that. But uh, I have been campaigning for years now to make sure that uh, Red Hat engineers are spending more time paying attention uh, to Fedora ELN builds. Because one of the uh, initial goals we set out for ELN was we want to be able to do this, but we also want to not impact or negatively impact the, the general Fedora process in, in, any, in, in any way if we can avoid it, which is why we have this shadow double build or second build going on that's, uh, that, uh, you know, the results of that build and those tests don't block the rawhide uh, builds uh, much as I would love if they could. Uh, but our agreement with Fedora was, yeah, we'll, we'll let you do that. Just try not to, you know, hold us all up because, and, Certainly, early on in the process, that would have been the case because I think it, it, it's uh, it's gone a lot better over the last uh, last you know, two uh, two years. Prior to that, uh, we had a success rate of probably only seventy percent of builds in Rawhide would successfully build on ELN uh, because they all many of them needed tweaks or. Uh, didn't uh, or uh, had old rel uh, you know old rel macros in there that it, we were expecting you know rel six you know we're, we're there rel because greater than eight rel six what's that rel greater than eight yes my favorite if statement yes um, so yeah lots of lots of little things but at this point uh, at least in the set of packages that uh, we that we have uh, have chosen for rel and CentOS stream most of those have 
over, over time gotten uh, adapted for that. And the maintainers now tend to be aware of our requirements or, and, and needs, but it would be nice if they were the ones also keeping an eye on things more directly. So. We have our second question. Okay, you wanna take it? What ways do we want to participate? And we, as in the greater we, as not just me and Stephen, not just Red Hatters, not even just Fedora people, what we as in the world? Yeah, let me, let me, let me pose, let me pose the question people. slightly differently. Okay. Let's, let's talk about going up to 11. Because uh, let, let's, let's be honest, 11 is in development right now. We haven't gotten 10 out of the door, but you guys have, an, uh, sorry, you folks, have an opportunity right now to, uh, to start directing uh, what, does, uh, what does CentOS Stream and RHEL 11 look like? What do you, if, 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 let's assume for the moment that you have just suddenly been given uh, right access to every repository in RHEL. Right access? Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. just, I'm just saying, no, I, I'm, I'm posing, a, hypo, <laughs> post, posing okay. a hypothetical. Okay. You can change anything. What is it? What are you changing? <laughs> nope, I'm sorry, you did the, uh, you did the Mr. Burns uh, hands, no, you gotta I'm say. That's all. <laughs> sorry? KDE by default. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I did not plant that person in the audience. <laughs> you're, you're, that's, you're not gonna get an argument from either of us, we both run KDE. Oh. <laughs> did you have a question? Is this where we say set and force zero? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I can get you on the <laughs> So I don't need write access to the rel repos, but if you go to like the ELN documentation on Fedora, it's like this is a giant development environment that's not for production use. Like, don't use it. Like, if we're gonna crank ELN up to eleven, that's that's the thing I would change. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. He, he had a soft voice, so just in case people <laughs> didn't didn't say, he was like, "We we currently on ELN say don't use this in production." He wants to change it so that it's. I'm going to say production quality. How about that? Sure. I'm I'm not I'm still not going to encourage people to do it on production, but production quality, which I think the checks would definitely help. Right. Yeah. I, I'm I'm inclined to agree. I. We say that more as a uh, legally uh, legal protective statement than anything else. Uh, we would love to see it to uh, be a, be ready for that. Um, I can't claim that we are today again because we don't have any. We don't have a lot of uh, the necessary checks to make sure that that stays stable. But I do know that we do have people that are running it in production, and uh, yes, that gives a. I feel a little uncomfortable saying that every now whenever I do, but uh, I'm glad to hear it because. The, uh, David said, he said that you did at, at Summit. Small, a small number. Oh, okay. Ah, I'm sorry. Apparently, they, uh, it's used for uh, CI purposes, but that's... But it's still, production CI, yes, right? Yes, but right? it's production CI. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I have been uh, corrected that it is not in uh, public production, but it is uh, production hosts for CI which is still uh, more than we have officially say you should do. <laughs> so this is just my own ignorance, but um, where are we putting the containers? Do we have container images and, and VM images for ELN? Did you say yes, container we do. images? I thought we did have container images. We do. Oh. Uh, uh, so the container images we have for Fedora ELN uh, exist. They are, uh, th this is another part of the uh, process that I'm gonna fix while I'm working on changing the uh, Compose, uh, the Compose uh, setup. Right now, uh, we, have a, we have artisanal scripts that, uh, <laughs> pull, that, that, pull them, uh, that pull them from the Compose, uh, from the, Compose uh, the ODCS Compose, and push them to uh, KIO uh, at, on, under the Fedora CI namespace. So it's uh, so if you were to pull it, it'd be uh, quay.io slash fedora ci slash fedora colon eln, um, and those are uh, those are pushed up. Uh, at, I think our, uh, you know it, I think it checks hourly for whether or not there's an, uh, the, whether or not a compose has uh, updated it and pushes those up. Um, 
now that I think on it, we are probably running up, uh, running up against uh, Red Hat's uh, very tolerant policy on storage. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, the, they, they do exist. Uh, that will hopefully change and become part of the uh, of the regular, the standard Fedora uh, uh, Quay space or registry Fedora. Uh, yeah, because if I have containers, then the next thing I can do is um, do upstream. So like if if we have containers that I can consume readily with a Podman pull, then we have pre-commit CI in the upstream projects that we could use to then do pre-commit CI testing upstream as well in kind of a virtuous feedback loop. Um, okay, so that means that um, we can try to use them. Like I'm assuming this is, must be what Meta is doing, but um, for example, today we use a Fedora release in pre-commit CI internally, so that when we're doing, uh, sorry, externally, so when we're doing upstream development, as new patches come in, we put those patches and we test them, and, but we actually test them in a Fedora released, so, but we could actually also test them in Fedora ELN as another stage of testing. So, what do you use the ELN container images for, or ELN for? Well, uh, we don't use we don't use the, uh, the container images. We actually install them on bare metal host. So we are ready for like uh, when we um, upgrade to CentOS stream, like we, we know what will change in the future. I have a question. And th this is how I would like one to participate. This is, this is putting on my alt images SIG hat. Um, <laughs> that's not my alt image, that's my Apple hat. Um, <laughs> but uh, making images with the uh, KDE or whatever is in currently ELN extras or whatever the name might transition to, but uh, what's currently in ELN extras and ELN and making my images from that. And I'm not looking at you, I'm also looking at myself, but you happen sure. to have a face and I can't look in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I do, I do have a face, uh, it's one only a mother could love, but uh, yeah, so uh, one of the things that uh, we are looking at, uh, as uh, I'm sure some of you have been to some of the uh, talks uh, at, the, at this conference around uh, Bootsy, and the other, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the image-based uh, RHEL and CentOS Stream and Fedora type stuff that, they're look that we're looking at. Um, one of the, uh, output, the potential outputs there that I've been talking about with folks is e uh, exactly that. We, uh, you know, for CentOS Stream and then by extension ELN and uh, ELN Extras or ELN and Apple 11, which is what we're, if you saw, if you saw the accidental uh, slide ahead, we were, we, were gonna, we were gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, is uh, we should be able to potentially create a new spins process in uh, Fedora that would allow people to essentially mix and match and then generate their own uh, their own Bootsy images with whichever package set that they want and then boot that. So yeah, it should very uh -huh. it should be very possible to do an ELN. So anything in the Fedora namespace or re repos. Yeah, as long as somebody built it for you know extras, Apple 11, what what, what we call it, and made those repos available to the uh, Bootsy uh, uh, build process, yeah, it should be very possible. That's cool. Uh, so I guess since we've started talking about it, maybe we should move to that slide. Just okay. unless the, uh, do folks have any gen other general questions about uh, like what? Uh, actually, I, before we go, I do want to ask the uh, the last question there. Well, we've actually. That's sort of why we had the two questions. What ways yeah. do we want to participate and what's blocking us? So we had containers. You talked about what's the block there. We had my doing something with EL and extras. You had the solution. Production. I think if we do checks, I think we can get it more production. Ready. Ready. Production. Well, like, yeah, yeah, so I don't want it to be perfect. Yeah. Like, it won't go. So obviously, I don't want it to go straight from where we are now to perfection, but it's just, it's easier to run Rawhide on a machine than it is to run ELN on a machine. And that's gonna be a point where it's like, when you try and convince developers whether to test on ELN, 
is the fact that like the, nobody's using it and it's nobody can use it. So why, why would I test against it? I, I would make the same argument that if I, before I turn it on in upstream uh, glibc pre-commit CI, I want some confidence that my pre-commit CI is not going to be read all the time on the ELN image, container image, as I pull and then do the build and test on it. So if we at least turn on the gating CI and we're looking at the total, and I, I'd be looking at my own gating CI results for it anyway, and I look at to see if ELN builds in Bodhi, because ELN builds show up in Bodhi for me, so that when I'm doing my weekly review, I go look at Bodhi and I go see what's the status, and I can see that ELN builds are green, and I know we're okay. And if we get that gating test in place, then I can start building more confidence and uh, pull, these, pull those containers and use them in pre-commit CI. So I do think that the, it seems to me then that the precondition is kind of like, how do we get turn on the gating tests to give better, better quality indicator for ELN and then we can use it in more places? Would that, does that solve your requirements too? Kind of, I don't necessarily, I don't want yeah. to specify how you should do it. I yeah. should just say that you should get to the, yeah. So I don't, I don't want to specify you need to turn on gating to do what I think I want, but you should get to a point where it's actually viable to have like a VM or whatever with ELN on and have it running, which it isn't really at the moment. It's not popular. Yeah. I've got one, but yeah, yeah. I, I, right. I, 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 I should it up now. Yes, yeah, it's, it's actually it, it works far far more often than it doesn't. Uh, we're just uh, mostly put, uh, you know covering our own butts a little bit, but it's yeah. I, uh, I mean, it is definitely not as pro not uh, by any stretch of the imagination ever going to be as production ready as CentOS Stream upon release. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we can try to stabilize things more often. Uh, I mean, right now the only gating test we have essentially is: did the compose complete properly? Did it produce all of the necessary images? Did it, uh, you know, did it uh, was it was it able to generate the uh, trees without run without dependency issues? Um, so that in general has been, for the couple of people I know that have been using it for CI, that has usually been uh, a sufficient bar for that purpose, although I will acknowledge that something like glibc probably has a little bit more of a stability requirement than some, than some other CI systems. But it's a little bit, it's also a little bit you of a... You depend on way less though, right? As a low level library, you depend on less. So the statement was that as a low level library, it also has fewer dependencies, so that is also true. That's true. Um, let me show. Can we flip it though? I mean, like, if glibc is one of those projects that want to use like uh, ELN as like a uh, as one platform to test against, can we say like, hey, you know, like a uh, use the ELN compost, test like a stable version of glibc, and see if you can actually pass the checks, not on the latest, but on a stable version, and say, well, if it's good enough for glibc testing, then you know, like, then we can. That's uh, okay. So that's getting to be a little bit of a chicken egg uh, problem, but uh, I, I mean, at, at in the first place, right now, and this is uh, this is very clearly something we have identified as a gap, is we don't have the we, we don't have the hooks in place to actually properly in, uh, implement gating tests. I think that we're going to get those for free as I'm working on the uh, transition to how uh, to building under the uh, to composing the way Fedora composes, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that because I've honestly only started that uh, process in depth over the last couple of weeks, and then had to pre and then had to prep for uh, for Flock. So, uh, my hope is that by transitioning to the way that Fedora is doing things, we'll gain uh, we'll at least gain access to this uh, to the same set of hooks that they have, so we can prevent it from at least you know moving to the mirror to getting synced to mirrors if we don't if it doesn't pass ch tests A, B, C, and D. Like this in. I remember one question that somebody asked me out of bounds. Oh, I'm using the one with where I usually plug in. Yay. Okay, it's still charging. Um, so one of the others was, is there a way that, because I noticed there's also CentOS Stream on here. It's not yes. just totally ELN. Uh, CentOS Stream 10, when we went to the mirrors, we didn't tell anybody, and several of the mirrors were not happy. So that's one of the things I'm going to write on my little notes is warn people before we push to the mirrors. 
So uh, did actually already consider that. Oh, uh, okay. where we, are, we are going to have our own uh, separate rsync space on the mirrors for ELN. So they will not just oh. they will not just show up as another Fedora uh, another you know, Fedora release. Someone will ha people in the mirrors will have to opt in to specifically pulling uh, ELN. So uh, that yeah, that's uh, definitely something we accounted for. Well, that's the ELN people. This right. is I'm, I was putting on my Cinto stream hat, right? Sure. Which is purple, not red. <laughs> So can you, can you put the uh, questions back up there for a second? Oh, sorry. Yep. I think these are great questions, but I kind of want to flip it around for a second. You know, uh, so you ask, you know, what ways do we want to participate, which I think is a great, great question, but what blocks us from participating? What is it that could be of most help? you know, by joining in and looking at what's going on or being involved in different ways. What would you guys like to see? All right, that is a great question that I, uh, that you have just reminded me. I completely uh, forgot to mention in, our, in the uh, talk part of this. Uh, uh, so the huge advantage to ELN, uh, and you, we, we showed you how the, t the uh, bootstrap time was so much uh, lower, it's because uh, how many people in here have heard the expression shift left? Not many. Okay, one more. But um, basically, the idea behind shift left is uh, looking, looking at a timeline, move as many of the things that you can do early as early as possible to maximize the amount of time to fix when things inevitably go wrong, when, uh, when Murphy makes his inevitable appearance. Um, and ELN is our way to do that for the uh, for RHEL. It's the e people have long made the dubious claim that uh, that Fedora is is RHEL's test bed, and sometimes that was true. That let's be honest. Uh, shoot, I'm being recorded. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, the reality was that no, Fedora has always really been driven by Fedorans, and uh, I mean, yes, there, there were limitations placed on us by Red Hat, mostly in terms of resourcing, but uh, ELN is our first real attempt to actually use Fedora as a, pr a proving ground and test bed for RHEL, and give us a specific space for that, um, and. I forgot where exactly where I was going with this, but I think that moving uh, moving everything left allows it, it, it's really about getting all that time that you have to not be surprised like you were in rel eight when things you know we bootstrap rel eight we'd hand it to the developers and suddenly they'd be panicked because wait a minute what do you what, what do you mean this function isn't there I've been relying on this function because it was it was there in Fedora yeah well it was an experimental feature it wasn't stable. Well, now we've got to now we've got to re replan our whole, our whole uh, our whole beta uh, beta process. Well, it, when when that when that came up when, when when I had a conversation a couple of months ago, that came up in uh, in uh, rel ten, and I was and we were all able to say you've had three years. <laughs> if you are being surprised by this, this is your own fault now. So there is there is some of that. There's a, there's a, a there's an ability to do things earlier, and there's an ability to point at somebody and say, "You missed your chance." This is that which can be a teaching opportunity. Learn from their mistakes. Uh, the the earlier you do things, the early the more feedback you can get, the more testing time and so soak time it gets, and the less surprised things get, uh, you will be, or or at least. It, when you are surprised, you will have three, uh, you know, one, two, three years to resolve uh, to deal with it, rather than one, two, three weeks to get uh, to, to scramble and re and replan. So uh, that I think is the strongest argument I can give for contributing to uh, to ELN is don't get surprised when you don't have time to be. Mm. Mm. Uh oh, <laughs> which one's what kind of hat is this? Is, oh, it's purple. You walked right into that. I did. <laughs> what kind of hat is it? Is that one of those floppy yeah, yeah. sailor hats? Oh, well, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I have my Cintos hat. 
I'll second. give it back afterwards, though, because I do have actually. It's a kangaroo. Does anyone have other? Nice does anyone have other questions on this uh, on this topic? Other th other ideas that they, they want to throw out? Uh, oh, great. Uh, yeah, speaking of preparing early, like I mean, like we as um, you know, like um, Santo as customer, we we are really happy, you know, like using Yale and as you know, like shifting left and preparing in advance. One, we normally find that vendors are much harder to persuade to even support stream. Let forget about Yale. So what's, what's the plan to actually get vendors to actually prepare mm. early for like uh, the next rail by using Stream and ELN? So uh, it was a little hard to hear. I'm gonna try and rephrase that uh, just to make sure I understood the question. So the, uh, the question is, uh, you, uh, you, you said that yes, it makes sense to move things to the left and the question is how do we convince other vendors uh, to, do, to take advantage of that, not just Red Hatters, but other vendors? Um, well, uh, the obvious, one, uh, the obvious uh, one I'll approach was, uh, for example, going to Red Hat Summit and, and co-presenting with, uh, with Meta about how they're using it internally and showing, them, uh, showing people the way. That, um, uh, for those who couldn't see on the ca can't see on the camera, uh, I was, I'm speaking to a Meta representative. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, which, which I did this year at, at Summit. Uh, Davide Kavalka and I uh, went and we talked about how, uh, it, how Facebook or, and Meta have been able to take advantage of this and it has helped them avoid, uh, for example, some of the RPM changes that are coming in RHEL 10. They got surprised by it in ELN two years before it was going to be an issue in, uh, when they went, uh, started to make production changes. I think convincing people about anything is always going to be hard, um, no matter how much it might be in their best interest. I think the best thing we can do is continue to show, to you know, find people who are having a good experience, help showcase those experiences and make it, you know, see how successful they were why don't you why don't you give this a try? You know, put throw it in your CI environment, throw it in your uh, in your staging environment. Just see, just to uh, avoid those surprises because again, surprises when it doesn't matter are much better than surprises when it does. To go on that question a little bit more, which I like your answer, it's a good answer, but uh, to, to kind of expand on that, what kind of marketing or you know visibility do we push with this as a community as a group or as red hat to you know vendors whether they're a community or not so that they're aware of it and they understand you know what that they could miss out on something as as, as you noted so that one is a very hard question and uh because obviously uh, like we keep saying it is it is not a production ready. It is very much meant for a testing and a testing environment, a CI environment, an early warning system, and so that means almost by definition uh, we we don't put it on the front page of Fedora uh, FedoraProject.org. We don't put it. Uh, you know, it's it's not it's not on Get Fedora next to the uh, Fedora server and Fedora workstation. Um, I think uh, probably. It, it, you're, ma you're making me think about this uh, seriously for, uh, for one of the first times, to be honest. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I think probably we need to, uh, to put together some material for the ambassadors, the Fedora ambassadors, to take to, con uh, to uh, conference halls, places where they're running a booth and talking to vendors rather than um, you know, uh, coming here and talking to a bunch of people who, are already, who have already drunk the Kool-Aid is maybe not the best, uh, most effective approach. Uh, for, adver for advertising and, and uh, recommending this. So yeah, maybe we need to have, a, have an engagement with the uh, Fedora ambassadors about getting uh, some materials put together for uh, you know, tech conferences or uh, uh, vendor booths. Thank you for asking that. I'm going to need you to move up front if you're going to keep asking questions. <laughs> I'm making sure you get your steps in. <laughs> so again, to expand on the thing I said before, because you keep saying like it's not meant to be usable. I well, didn't say that. Right. I never said it wasn't meant to be use usable. I said it wasn't meant. Uh, it wasn't meant for handling customer loads. Sure. So is, I would is, say is perhaps a better way of phrasing it. Right. So, so to to get visibility to it. I, like, I've heard discussions 
even today, with like conflicts and stuff, I've getting it so that you can basically get like a Fedora ecosystem and then build like a magic spin out of it, which may contain like random packages almost from like, CentOS like 3. Like ELN KDE. Right, see it like, yeah, yeah. and, and Senua Stream, and so ELN, in my opinion, would come under that branch. Like, you could create your own, like, development future spin or whatever. But when you keep saying, like, don't put it on machines, it, it goes a little bit against that. I, I said don't use it for production workloads. I don't think I ever said don't put it on machines. Right. Maybe. I feel like that's an important distinction. Okay. My, my mind is thinking, don't put it on something that if it crashes, you lose money. Um, but then also, I would argue that that's also true of basically any, so any uh, distribution that doesn't have a support, a support phone number. But that's, mm, that's I, I am a Red Hat employee. I am obligated to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've peripherally seen ALN before. I've never actually used it internally uh, where I work. We kind of rebuild since I stream from nightly snap, well, not night, nightly repository snapshots every day. So what, what advantage would this give me uh, in my like early warning process uh, that I don't already have with uh, nightly builds of CentOS stream? Uh, that's a good question. It, it is a good question, and I, I think maybe we, uh, I, think I, I think I originally had a slide uh, in the uh, previous deck that I copied some of these from that I didn't include here, which was, uh, it's essentially about where, you, uh, where you're preparing for. CentOS Stream is the, uh, the right place to prepare for the upcoming RHEL minor release, so 10.0, 10.1, 10.2. ELN is where you prepare for the next RHEL major release. Not this, it'll be 11, and then later 12. And so that's, and that I feel is, that is a place that has a great deal more risk inherent in it than a, than a minor release. If you, um, in Stento Stream, we have, it, Red Hat provides uh, ABI and API guarantees on most of its packages, or at least the application compatibility guideline tells you what to expect there. And so you're not going to see a huge amount of churn in the uh, in the CentOS Stream 9. As far you'll see new features and uh, uh, hardware enablement, bug fixes, but you're generally not going to see a newer GCC. You're not. Yeah, you're not. Well, you might see a new GCC, but um, the, you, you're not going to you're not going to see a a, 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 a a backwards incompatible change of a major system library. You're not going to see uh, a, a jump from you know, major versions of, of various application software. You are going to see those things in ELN as they happen in Fedora, and, you, and, and they'll be re built in the way that RHEL is. So what you're getting is a preview of what the next major shift in the, uh, in the EL ecosystem is going to look like. So that's where I think the value is, because it, you're much more likely to hit major issues uh, this, this is not selling us very well, but you're much more likely to hit, <laughs> you're, you're, you're much more likely to hit, um, to, to experience tectonic shifts in the way things work, yeah, because open source doesn't stand still. And you'll get those warnings in ELN years before you'd get them in CentOS Stream. Yeah, and because you, and what you might actually see is you may see ABI progressions and regressions in ELN, which is uh, you may end up uh, from like an ELF binary perspective, you may get new symbols added, you may build an application on top of that in ELN, and then those symbols might disappear and your application may stop running. Um, and the reason that that might have happened is you might have gotten a brand new feature added, the new feature started getting rolled out, people started testing it, like there was testing in both Rawhide and ELN, and then we went, oh no, that feature doesn't compose with the rest of our system, we're going to, we're going to delete the feature and, and do it over again, because there's no ABI stability guarantee. So you simply need an ELN to be prepared to go, oh, and then throw your application away and basically rebuild your application again against the new ABI baseline. So the ABI baseline is like, in not rel, the ABI baseline goes chunk, three years, chunk, three years, chunk, and it has these steps. But in ELN, the ABI baseline goes forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. And sometimes- To be fair, forwards. mostly yeah. goes forward. Mostly goes forward, <laughs> yeah. And like, 
if it goes if it goes backwards, it's because people made a decision based on the data and the feedback that we got from the actual deployments in Rawhide or the deployments actually in ELN. So I think that, and that feedback might come from you, right? Like it might come from you saying like, you know, that new symbol causes me these problems and I've got these issues and can you please revert that? And in fact, I could take such feedback straight all the way to upstream glibc and be like, like before, like six months before we make the release, you know, I got, we got feedback in ELN that this is not gonna work for us. Right, and then we delete the symbol. But that conversation between us, you got value out of it, but then your app might stop working now that we remove the symbol and we, and we rebuild. So um, often during uh, release of Fedora, there's a stage called a mass rebuild where we try to purge any ABI or API artifacts that we didn't have guarantees for, but when we make an official Fedora release, that locks in that Fedora's ABI guarantees. But those guarantees don't necessarily exist in ELN or in Rawhide because it's an evolving set of uh, conversations, really, or collaboration between anybody who's using the distro. Thank you. You said that far better than I ever could. Yeah. You know, we only have 20 minutes left. I'm really tempted to switch to the next slide. Are we okay with that? <laughs> By all means, try. Oh, wait. My mouse has lost focus. Let's get to the right. There we are. All right. So some of the, uh, the folks in this room uh, may know about ELN Extras, which uh, it was originally envisioned as essentially uh, an analog to uh, where, where ELN is to CentOS stream, uh, ELN Extras is, was to Apple. Was the original was the original pitch? We were intending for, uh, our, for to use the same tooling that we use for building ELN to essentially precede uh, what would be what would become Apple Ten. Uh, this did not work. It, I mean, our builds uh, we, we we were doing the automatic rebuilds, and sometimes they worked, and then sometimes they were KDE packages. But uh, sorry, Troy. <laughs> no, but we had the biggest uh, failures. Yeah, and, and it, I mean, it's a complicated project. Yeah. It's not, it, it, no, no, not picking on KD. But so we had some, uh, some uh, hiccups there, but the biggest problem we had was that um, we did not, we, we significantly underestimated the amount of work and effort that was going to go into the actual branch point that uh, we didn't, we were not able to. Uh, in any meaningful way, branch Apple at the moment, the same time we branched uh, CentOS Stream from ELN. And as a result, ELN Extras just kept carrying on as we final finalized things in CentOS Stream 10. And then by the time we went back and looked at it, we realized, oh, look, a new LLVM has landed in the, same, in this, in the meantime. Or uh, basically all the, re all the rebuilds that had been done over the last uh, few weeks had made it incompatible with what we had shipped in CentOS Stream 10. So it was now already too late to, uh, to just fork them and build. We would have had to try and go back and try to fork them from the, that original moment, but not everything was building at that moment anyway, because right. we'd all been busy and again, yeah. the, the, a whole bunch of packages, especially the QT stack, had just For the emerging rail team, that's, we have cycles, three year cycles, and this is peak three yes. years of things. So we were as busy as we ever are. And uh, yeah, it, it just got dropped. And uh, so as a result, uh, I, I, I do apologize, Carl, but it did, it did mean that uh, we couldn't just reuse all of that effort uh, towards Apple 10. Uh, we would have loved to. Uh, sure. And so we started looking forward to, OK, so what can we do better with Apple 11? And we recognized, among other things, that because of the, the, that cycle, uh, realistically, we can't commit to actually branching that at the right moment. I mean, there's, we don't have an easy way to automate a lot of that. And something that we, consi we considered then was, well, what if instead of trying to uh, have ELN extras for the entire, run of e uh, the entire run of ELN 11, what if we actually just try to start Apple 11 really early and let, uh, and let Apple maintainers uh, pick, uh, uh, ma choose to maintain their packages like they would, exactly like they would in Apple with um, but have it build against ELN instead of CentOS Stream and, uh, and RHEL, 
uh, for the uh, for the duration of that period. And so that's something we were going to. Uh, th this is a very high level idea that we have not thought through. In because uh, I can see I can see uh, Carl looking at me, and I can I can almost see the list of things wrong with what I'm saying running through, running past his eyes. Um, but this is this is something that we really wanted to go into at, at, in more depth. Um, here at Flock, uh, uh, probably during the Apple uh, Hackfest, uh, assuming that we can get past the uh, critical we're stuff. We're to put a time, time block in the Hackfest for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what we were thinking is that, uh, and maybe we uh, work with uh, with you so that people who opt in, we, maybe we uh, stand up another instance of our build sync tool so that it would build for Apple during that time frame. Um, you know, with the Apple tags and, and outside of our ELN uh, uh, bits. And I, th I think uh, that needs exploring and we need to figure out where the, uh, what we don't know, we don't know, uh, especially because uh, I'm, I'll be honest, I, in my uh, understanding of how Apple actually works is uh, a little out of date. I haven't maintained an Apple package in a while. So, uh, all, well, all of my packages got into Rel. <laughs> I'll, cra I'll crash your talk real quick. Well, this is picking me up. Uh, just to say, I don't. It's not just oh, well, there's all these problems. I love the question. I don't know the answers yet. <laughs> we should talk more. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we're. Uh, this slide was largely in here to just uh, outline the problem and uh, encourage people to come to the uh, Hackfest so we can figure uh, figure out the answer. But if anybody wants to throw some uh, throw out some uh, ideas, okay, please. No, I says if you, oh, you I didn't think I was finishing your <laughs> sentence for you. Ideas. I I thought we put the slide in so I could put the little elves on the other side, each side of ELN. I mean, well, that's that why I put the slide. <laughs> in. I mean, that is very cute. I thought you weren't ever. I thought you never called those out. I thought they were just there. Oh, that's true. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to call out the L's. You you didn't see this one either. I mean, you you, you did. Okay. Uh, but if anybody has any uh, strong statements or questions they would like to ask on that front, um, oh. speak now or wait till wait until Apple Ten Hackfest. Uh, was it tomorrow or is it? It's after? tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow. Saturday is stuff. Saturday is all Hackfest and workshops. So. Yeah, Saturday is the more informal Hackfest. There's yeah. Anyway. Okay. I think uh, we I think we're slides? done. I think we, we're, we're, we have a I think we had at least one informational uh, get slide. Get involved. Oh, you were going to have the Centa stuff and you didn't. The what? You were going to have the Centa stream uh, links there too, but you didn't. Oh, I didn't. It's okay. Well, there's the ELN stuff. Uh, there's the ELN stuff. Later on, one of us will put the uh, Centa stream links in the uh, chat for the channel for this room. Yep. But. Uh, I, I, don't, I think that's pretty much all we have, and we're pretty close to the end of the session, actually. I'm surprised he, that you he pulled it. out the 10 minutes uh, sign. I was ready. All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, we asked for an hour. We got an hour, we got an hour and a half, and we, we managed an hour and 20, so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for your time. And we'll see you later.